Good evening, my lovelies, and welcome. I'm Lady McCreepster. This evening, we have a tale from the No Sleep Reddit by author James and the Giant Leech. Before we dive in, though, my dears, I'd like to take the chance to thank my dark family on Patreon for their continuous support. Family members such as Danny White, Nicholas Corries, Dawn Fritzwater, Melissa Perez, Honey Santiago, Oliver Dace, Karen Parrott, L. Andrew Augustus, Dana Fringer, Stephen Aguilera, Tay the Fluth, Bill Thornsley, Laura Setta Prenry, and all of those listed in the episode description below. Your support really does mean the world to me and helps keep this channel and podcast going. If you would like to join these ghouls and support this channel, go to patreon.com slash ladymacreepster for more information. But now though, my dears, it is time. So come, lean in closer, and we'll begin. I felt itchy all over. Yes, at the sight of the incision beneath my shoulder blade where the surgeon cut me open to remove the cyst, but everywhere else too, all over my body, like there were these tiny bugs, hundreds of them, scuttling beneath my skin in search of a way out. I was told the incision would itch after surgery. Nerves send signals to the spinal cord that the skin is being touched, even while it's covered by a bandage. The surgeon called this a phantom signal. It's like a tickle from a ghost, he said. Soon the skin would fuse together and the wound would heal. So long as I didn't scratch the itch, nature would run its course. I smiled and thanked him for the advice. He asked if I'd like to see the cyst he removed from my back. I declined. You've seen one, you've seen them all, I told him taking off my hospital gown to reveal the surgical marks that covered the length of my body. The first cyst came on my twelfth birthday, a pebble-sized orb that appeared on my kneecap seemingly overnight. At that age, you're aware of every change your body is undergoing, so I became a little obsessed with it, rolling my finger over it all hours of the day. My mother caught me one time fiddling with it at the dinner table. She was surprised I had not told her earlier. Cysts are not a normal part of development, she said. I felt ashamed for having developed one and told her I was sorry for not telling her sooner. But later that day, while my mom scheduled an appointment with the family doctor, my finger returned to it. As I rolled the growth around, I remember wondering what else might be lurking beneath my skin. By the time I graduated high school, they had removed 38 cysts from my body. My parents were exasperated and burdened by debt from the hospital bills. But more important to them than all that was the chance at a normal life for their only daughter. Though the cysts were benign, they grew quickly and were extremely visible, sometimes mounting to the size of a golf ball before they were cut out. Kids thought I was contagious and mostly kept their distance, which triggered my parents' alarm even more that I would one day develop into a hideous, friendless creature. Alligator girl is what they called me at school. My parents took me to see specialists of every variety. The furthest anyone got was that I had some rare genetic condition that created a breeding ground for cysts. No one knew what sparked their growth or how long into life I would produce them. 
left with few other choices, my parents decided to continue to cut the cysts out of my body as soon as they appeared. It was painful, sure, but not nearly as much as the life of a social outcast. I carried on their practice through college and into my early 20s. I wore jeans and long sleeve shirts to cover the many scars, worried someone might assume the wounds were self-inflicted, which, in a way, I guess they were, but whatever, it worked. I had friends, a successful career in marketing, even a committed partner, and no one was even remotely aware of my condition. The only thing I struggled to control was the urge to scratch the itch after every surgery. Sometimes I'd have to sleep with my hands bound so I didn't accidentally peel back the bandage and dig my nails into the flesh. Even still, I'd have these vivid dreams in which I'd scratch the itch so feverishly that my skin would come off in chunks. It felt amazing. My boyfriend once woke me up in bed saying I was moaning so loudly he thought I was having a sex dream. I lied and told him that's exactly what it was. The fear of becoming the alligator girl, still alive and well in me, no amount of invasive surgery could cleave her out. When my boyfriend moved into my flat, I could no longer hide my condition from him. He caught on to my regularly scheduled appointments pretty fast and would no longer accept my vague answer of it's just some routine medical stuff. He told me he felt the bandages beneath my clothes when we hugged and the ridges on my skin when we slept together, always in the dark. He'd hoped someday I'd bring it up on my own, but it was starting to drive him crazy. I told him about all the cysts and why I'd hidden it from him for so long. He held me close and told me he was relieved it wasn't something more serious. Let them grow, he said to me. There was no need to keep harming myself like that. He wanted to get to know my true form. That's the advantage of being with a burgeoning social worker, I thought. They are naturally empathetic people. We held each other for a while longer, then with some reluctance, I promised I'd cancel my upcoming appointment. One had already started to bud along my collarbone. My boyfriend first tried to ignore the massive bulge growing on my chest. He'd keep his eyes on mine when we talked and below my waist when we fucked. But when it grew to the size of a lemon, I thought it was time to address the cyst in the room. Are you still okay with this? I wanted to know, sitting naked across from him in the bathtub. Finally, he looked at it for a solid minute, just staring at the bulge on my collarbone. It's not dangerous? he asked at last. It looks pretty severe, like it might pop or something, he added. Do you want it to go away? I asked. His eyes fell back on the cyst. He started to cry, then vigorously nodded his head, yes. They had to put me under due to the size of the cyst. I woke up with the surgeon hovering above me, giving his little discharge speech about not scratching the itch. I smiled and thanked him for the advice, still loopy from the pain meds. My partner drove me home. He held my hand the whole way home and assured me we did the right thing. It felt as if I had just aborted an unwanted child. That was the kind of energy in the car on the drive back to our flat in the hills. Later that night, while my boyfriend slept soundly beside me, I rose from the bed and stumbled my way to the bathroom. My heart palpitated much faster than usual. I threw cold water on my face and tried to catch my breath. 
I was thinking of the itch on my collarbone, obsessing over it actually, which made the rest of my skin feel as though it was crawling. I tried scratching my feet, thighs, back of my arms, but it wasn't enough. So I took off my shirt, then the gauze taped over the surgical wound. It wasn't long before I unwound the stitches and pulled out the nylon strings. The flesh barely clung together, pursed like angry red lips. I was struck by how easy it was to slide my fingers in, peel the skin back and expose the open wound. I caught my reflection in the mirror, but I no longer recognized the woman staring back. Skin dropped at my feet in messy clumps. It all needed to come off. Maybe the pain meds were still working, or maybe something else had taken a hold, but I didn't need any of it. If anything, I felt a warmth in my gut, a calmness in my chest, as I continued to peel my flesh off. When it was all stripped away, including my face and scalp with its color-treated hair, I ran my fingers over my body. There were bumps everywhere, most small and nascent, like the first one I'd found on my kneecap as a child, the alligator girl. I would have spent the rest of my life trying in vain to remove what would always be a part of me. I stood above my partner while he slept, naked in my true form. I didn't want to startle him, so I decided to stay there and wait until he woke up. I wasn't sure how he'd respond if he really meant the words he'd said to me before the surgery, but one thing was clear. I scratched the hell out of that itch. Thank you for joining me this evening, my lovelies. If you have just stumbled upon my realm, feel free to have a peek around, my dears. But before leaving, do remember to hit that subscribe button and additionally, that bell icon if you're watching on YouTube to be notified of new uploads. If you'd like to reach out to me on social media, I am Lady McCreepster on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. Unfortunately, my dears, that is all the time we have this evening. Till next time, sweet dreams.